Part 1. Lights out at Weltbild. Weltbild, the German bookstore, is closing. This iconic store has been a staple in the community for decades, offering a wide range of books, magazines and other literary treasures. It has been a place where people could lose themselves in the world of words, find solace in stories and discover new ideas. The news of its closure has sent ripples through the community, leaving many to reminisce about the countless hours spent within its walls. It's the end of August and the shelves are almost bare. The once bustling aisles, filled with eager readers and curious minds, now stand empty and silent. The vibrant displays that once showcased the latest bestsellers and hidden gems are now just empty spaces, a stark reminder of the end of an era. The few remaining books are being sold at a discount, a final attempt to clear out the inventory before the doors close for good. After years of struggling, the company is finally giving up. The rise of digital media, online shopping and changing consumer habits have all contributed to the decline of traditional bookstores. Despite efforts to adapt and innovate, Weltbill couldn't keep up with the rapid changes in the industry. The decision to close was not made lightly, but it was ultimately unavoidable. The financial strain had become too great and the company could no longer sustain its operations. For the 440 employees, it's a sad day. Many of them have dedicated years, even decades, to working at Weltbild. They have built relationships with regular customers, shared their love of books and created a welcoming atmosphere that made the store feel like a second home. The closure means not only the loss of their jobs, but also the end of a chapter in their lives. The uncertainty of what comes next weighs heavily on their minds. They knew it was coming, but that doesn't make it any easier. The announcement of the closure had been looming for months, and while they had time to prepare, the reality of the situation is still hard to accept. The camaraderie among the staff, the shared experiences and the sense of purpose they found in their work are all things that will be deeply missed. The final days are filled with a mix of emotions, from sadness and frustration to nostalgia and gratitude. Customers, too, are feeling the loss. For many, Weltbild was more than just a place to buy books. It was a sanctuary, a place where they could escape the hustle and bustle of everyday life. It was a place where they could find inspiration, connect with others who shared their interests and participate in community events. The closure leaves a void that will be hard to fill and many are left wondering where they will go to find the same sense of belonging and connection. Weltbild was more than just a store, it was a part of the community. It hosted book clubs, author signings and literary events that brought people together. It supported local authors and provided a platform for new voices to be heard. The loss of Weltbild is not just a loss for the employees and customers, but for the entire community. It marks the end of an era and serves as a reminder of the changing landscape of the book industry. As the lights go out at Weltbild, the memories and impact it had will continue to live on in the hearts of those who cherished it. Part two, no miracle rescue. The writing was on the wall for Weltbild. The once thriving bookstore chain, a beloved name in the literary world, was now facing its darkest hour. The shelves that were once brimming with bestsellers and literary classics were now empty, a stark reminder of the changing times. They needed a miracle. But miracles are in short supply these days, especially in the business world. The digital age had transformed the way people consumed books and Weltbild struggled to keep up. The rise of e-books and online retailers had chipped away at their customer base, leaving them in a precarious position. The company tried to find a buyer, someone to swoop in and save the day. They held countless meetings, hoping to strike a deal that would keep their doors open. The boardroom was filled with discussions, proposals and desperate attempts to find a lifeline. But nobody wanted to touch them. Potential investors saw the writing on the wall too. The market was unforgiving and the risks were too high. Every phone call ended in disappointment. Every meeting concluded with a shake of the head. The problems were too big, the losses too steep. Financial reports painted a grim picture with red ink spreading across the pages like a wound that wouldn't heal. The company's debts were mounting and the revenue streams were drying up. It was too risky, even for the bravest investor. The dream of a miracle rescue faded with each passing day. Employees, once hopeful, now faced an uncertain future. The community, which had supported Weltbuild for years, watched in sorrow as their beloved bookstore chain edged closer to its inevitable end. Part 3. The Price of Progress 
The world is changing and not everyone can keep up. Weltbuild is a casualty of progress, a victim of the digital age. Their costs were too high, especially for IAT and marketing. They needed to make a profit, but they just couldn't compete. The internet has changed everything, and for some businesses that means extinction. Part 4, A History of Troubles. This wasn't Weltbuild's first rodeo. They'd been in trouble before, facing insolvency a decade ago. Back then, it was their parent company, the Catholic Church, that was in trouble. Weltbuild managed to escape that time, but the scars remained. They were always fighting an uphill battle, trying to outrun their past. Part 5, Goliath wins again. We've seen this story before. The little guy versus the giant, David versus Goliath. But in the age of Amazon, the ending is almost always the same. Amazon is a behemoth, a retail giant that casts a long shadow. They're everywhere, selling everything, and they're very, very good at it. For companies like Weltbuild, it's a David and Goliath story where uh, Goliath always wins. Part 6, Empty Shelves, Uncertain Futures. The closure of Weltbuild is a blow to the German book industry. It's a reminder that even the biggest names aren't invincible. For the employees, it's a time of uncertainty. What will they do next? Where will they go? The job market is tough, and finding a new job is never easy. Part 7. A farewell to paperbacks. Is this the end of an era? Will we all be reading e-books in the future? It's a question that's been asked before. The truth is, nobody knows for sure, but one thing is certain. The way we consume media is changing. The digital revolution is here, and it's not going away. Part 8. The digital revolution rolls on. The digital revolution is like a runaway train. It's powerful, it's fast, and it's not slowing down for anyone. The internet has changed everything, from the way we communicate to the way we shop. And for some businesses like Weltbuild, it's been too much to handle. Part 9. Adapting or dying. The message is clear, adapt or die. Businesses that can't keep up with the times are doomed to fail. It's the law of the jungle, and the digital jungle is no different. The companies that survive will be the ones that can adapt, innovate and change with the times. Part 10, what's next for book lovers? So what does the future hold for book lovers? Will we all be reading on Kindles and iPads? Maybe, but there will always be a place for physical books. There's something special about holding a book in your hands, about turning the pages, about the smell of old paper. Part 11, the end of an era. This chapter marks a poignant moment in the history of literature and retail. The closure of Weltbuild, a beloved bookstore chain, signifies more than just the end of a business. It represents the closing of a chapter in the lives of countless individuals who found solace, knowledge and joy within its walls. The closure of Weltbuild is a sad day for book lovers, for employees and for the industry as a whole. For decades, Weltbuild was more than just a place to buy books. It was a community hub, a sanctuary for readers of all ages. Employees who dedicated their lives to fostering a love for reading now face an uncertain future, and loyal customers mourn the loss of a cherished space. The empty shelves and shuttered doors are a stark reminder of the challenges faced by traditional bookstores in an increasingly digital world. The industry as a whole is undergoing a transformation, driven by the rise of e-commerce and digital reading platforms. While these innovations offer convenience and accessibility, they also pose a threat to the tangible, tactile experience of browsing a physical bookstore. It's the end of an era, but it's also a sign of things to come. The world is changing, and we need to change with it. The closure of Weltbuild is a reflection of broader societal shifts towards digital consumption. As we move forward, it's essential to recognize the value of adapting to new technologies while preserving the essence of what makes reading special. The advent of digital e-readers and the proliferation of smartphones and tablets have revolutionized the way we consume literature. These devices offer unparalleled convenience, allowing readers to carry entire libraries in their pockets. However, this shift also raises questions about the future of physical books and the spaces that house them. As we navigate this new landscape, it's crucial to find a balance between embracing technological advancements and maintaining the traditions that have defined the literary world for centuries. Modern tech-savvy bookstores are emerging, blending the old with the new. 
These spaces offer digital reading options alongside physical books, creating a hybrid experience that caters to diverse preferences. But even as we embrace the future, let's not forget the past. The rich history of bookstores is filled with stories of discovery, connection and inspiration. Futuristic bookstore designs and innovative technologies like virtual reality can enhance the reading experience, but they should complement, not replace, the timeless joy of holding a book in your hands. Let's not forget the past. The charm of old bookstores with their rich wooden shelves and vintage ambience holds a special place in the hearts of many. These spaces are more than just retail outlets, they are cultural landmarks that have witnessed countless moments of literary exploration and personal growth. Let's not forget the joy of browsing a bookstore, of wandering through aisles filled with stories waiting to be discovered. The act of leisurely browsing bookshelves, feeling the weight of a book and flipping through its pages is an experience that digital screens cannot replicate. Cozy bookstore interiors, with their inviting atmosphere, provide a sense of comfort and belonging. The joy of discovering a new author, of stumbling upon a book that speaks to your soul, is a magical moment. It's a reminder that the world of literature is vast and full of surprises. People smiling while reading a book lost in its pages is a testament to the enduring power of storytelling. The experience of getting lost in a good book, of being transported to different worlds and living vicariously through characters, is something that will never go out of style. Whether in a cosy corner of a bookstore or in the comfort of your home, the act of reading remains a cherished pastime because that's something that will never go out of style. The sight of happy people reading in a park, children engrossed in books in a library, and the shared love for stories across generations is a beautiful reminder.